Okay, so now we're getting into a regression analysis. This is um, a very different topic from the other videos that we've been looking at, which are really just on hypothesis testing. Uh, and now, as you probably know from class and maybe other videos, regression analysis involves estimating relationships between two or more variables. We are going to be starting off with uh, what is the simple uh, linear regression, if I can squeeze this in, and that is of the form y equals some intercept and some slope along with some error term. Now again, I've said this I think in every video, I'm focusing on how to get the results from Excel, so I'm not going to be explaining the theory and the concepts and you know the, the process involved in getting these uh, least squares estimates for a simple linear regression model. We are only going to go through the process in Excel of how to obtain those coefficients and how to obtain the residuals that are necessary for performing a residual plot to determine whether or not the assumptions about that error term uh, are being met, as well as whether the assumption on a linear relationship uh, between your x and y variable, if that is actually a sound relationship as well, or maybe there's some nonlinear components to that relationship that uh, we aren't going to get into here. So I'm going to work with, again, a fabricated data set. I'm not really going to have much context or a problem. I have, I guess, a little bit of context in this one because it does make it a little bit easier to talk about. I'm going to be working with um, a data set that is relating sales in thousands of dollars to experience and this is going to be measured in months. Okay, but again, the focus here is on Excel. How do I get my results? So let's get into Excel. Here's my data set. I've got my Y variable and I've got my X variable, sales and experience. Now, generally, the first thing that your instructor, at least what I would require from students, is to produce a scatter plot of your sample data. In all of the hypothesis testing work that we've done, generally the first step in the analysis is to look at a set of descriptive statistics. What do you see in those numerical summaries of your sample data? That's sort of a typical and normal approach to a variety of different types of hypothesis testing. For regression analysis, the first step is to look at a scatter plot because when you're doing regression analysis, you're trying to get some insight as to the nature of the relationship, if any, between your two variables, X and Y. And so a scatter plot makes that straightforward to do, at least to give you that first glance, uh, a bit of insight as to whether or not that relationship exists or if it's positive or negative. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, the scatter plot tool. I hit insert, and here I've got all of these scatter plots. Now, I have a little bit of a glitch here because what I need to do is to highlight my data, like so, and then I want to come in here and produce a scatter plot. Now, I have a little bit of a problem. The problem is is that my data is not really organized properly because the way that Excel reads the data as, as it interprets that scatter plot is whichever column is on the right-hand side, I'm mirrored, on the right-hand side, that is, what with, with, that is what it will place on the Y axis. Now, when I'm looking at my data and I consider my model, Sales is my dependent variable here. Sales is dependent on experience. Sales is my y-axis variable. Experience is my x-axis variable. So I am just going to, whoops, I'm just going to move these around because that will then make it a little bit easier to produce a scatter plot. Oops, don't want to do that. Okay. So now I'm going to go insert, I'm going to highlight that data set, 
and I'm going to produce just that simple scatter plot. And now you can see that previous scatter plot, it said experience on the top. Now I have sales on the top. This is my dependent variable. This is what I have on the X axis. This is what I want. So for my students, if you're asked to produce that scatter plot, this is it. You may want to adjust the, the, the chart title. You may want to put in some labels. You can do that if you come in. You know, there's some quick layout options here. You can get, um, you know, a variety of different um, formats. Some of them might make more sense than others. Maybe something straightforward like this. I don't need that legend. Here I can put in my axis title. This is my x-axis, so this is going to be experience my y-axis this one is going to be sa sales and there we go okay so now i've got a nice looking table i can just copy and paste that into my word document or into my report as part of my um, scatter plot okay so then the next step is probably going to be to perform that regression analysis so very similar to everything else that we've done. Data analysis. Here you can see again it's alphabetical, so we go to regression. Now you may have talked about a simple linear regression, you may have talked a multiple linear regression. The tool in Excel is exactly the same. I will make another video for multiple linear regression. You'll see it's performed in almost exactly the same manner. Okay, hit OK. I've got some nonsense in here again from before. Let me just start fresh. So here it is very important that you input your data consistent with your model. I need to know which variable is my dependent variable and which variable is my independent variable because you can see here it's asking what is my Y, that's my dependent, what is my X, that's my independent. So here I need to make sure that I select as my Y, my dependent variable, this is sales. You'll notice again, I am definitely picking up the label as I always do. And here I'm picking up my independent. And here I have only the one independent in a multiple regression, I would have more than one. If I had more than one, I would just select all of them. Here I have only the one. I pick up just that one. I did select the labels. So again here, make sure you have this clicked if you did indeed select the labels. Don't click it if you did not select the labels. Here I did, so I included, uh, so I clicked it there so that Excel will pick up the labels in its output. It makes it a little bit easier to read. Confidence level. So by default, Excel is going to provide you with a 95% confidence interval estimate for your estimated coefficients. It always will give you that 95% confident. If you want something other than a 95% interval, you can put that in here. So let's say just so I can show you in the output if I put 90% here. If I don't, it's going to give me actually two 95% intervals. So let's just put 90 in here just for fun. Output range tell it where you want the output to go. Residuals. So you may or may not have talked about residual analysis yet in class. If you haven't yet, you probably will soon enough. Residual analysis is what is used to determine whether or not the assumptions are being met about that error term. Remember, there's five assumptions. Four of them are assumptions about the error term itself. Uh, that fifth assumption is really the fact that we're assuming a linear relationship between X and Y uh, on its own. So in order to evaluate whether or not those assumptions are being met, we want the residuals. Now, in class, you probably talked about the difference between these just basic residuals and these the standardized residuals. I don't care much for the residuals. I'm not going to click that one. Actually, Excel is going to give it to me anyways, and I'm going to ignore it. What I really want are the standardized residuals. Okay, so we've got everything here, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, here's our output. Much of what you have probably talked about in class 
is all visible in this output. And let me just clean it up a little bit first, and then we'll go through. Come on, you. Okay, and here we go. Okay. So we've got a few things. <clears throat> we have the R squared. This is that measure of goodness of fit. This is that coefficient of determination. This is one measure of how well do your chosen independent variables explain the variation in your dependent variable. So here I would see this is an R squared of 0.48. I would say the uh, amount of experience that an individual has explains 48% of the variation in their sales. Okay, so there's, there's my R squared. Multiple R squared, that is the coefficient of correlation between your X and your Y variables. So that is the square root of the R squared with the sign of the slope. And here I can see we'll talk about this in a little bit. There's my slope, it's positive. So I've got a fairly strong positive correlation. Adjusted R squared, not useful for a simple linear. We'll talk about that with the multiple regression. Here's the standard error of the regression. The standard error of the regression you may have talked about in class is the square root of the MSE. Okay, come down to our ANOVA. There's the MSE right here. So that standard error, 21.72, that's the square root of my MSE. Now, for a simple linear regression, I generally tell my students to ignore the ANOVA because this whole ANOVA is building up to an F test. And in class, we would have talked about how in a simple linear regression, the F test is absolutely identical to the T test on the slope, okay? So for a simple linear regression, I am comfortable with my students just completely ignoring this because it's entirely redundant. It's the same as the T test. I'll come back to that in just two minutes. You can ignore this. If your instructor has reason to want to see it in that report, then by all means, don't ignore it. And different instructors will emphasize different things. Here now I have my estimated regression equation. I have my intercept and I have my slope. So if I were to write this out, my intercept is 5608. My slope is 1.05. So this gives me an estimated regression equation of 56.08, 1.05x. Okay, so those numbers there are giving me the coefficients. One of the main reasons why we have done this analysis in the first place is to estimate the nature of the relationship between x and y. Well, there it is. There's my intercept, there's my slope. Now, the rest of this output, is looking at the statistical significance of those coefficients. I've got my standard error, my T statistic, those would be my test stats for the corresponding hypothesis test on significance, and my p-values. Here I have the lower and upper limits for that 95% confidence interval. Remember I said that by default, Excel will always give you a 95% interval. I had selected, I had written in that command, if I come back up here, here I said also, give me a 90% interval. And so that's what it's given me right here. There's the 95, which it gives by default, and there's the 90% that I asked for. If I left that blank, if I didn't ask for anything else, it would actually give me two 95% confidence intervals. For whatever reason, I don't know. I just delete one of them anyways. Okay, so that's all of your output for that estimated regression equation. You've got some measures of goodness of fit. You've got some measures of statistical significance. You've got that intercept, sorry, that intercept, and more importantly, that slope. That slope is really what gives you an indication, a measurement of the nature of that relationship between X and Y. That You interpret that slope as the marginal effect, a marginal change, each additional month of experience. Average sales increase by $1,050, right? I'm saying 1,000 because 
sales here is measured in thousands. So if this is one, it's 1,000. 1 1.05, 1,050 dollars. So there's my point estimate of that marginal effect. There's my 95% interval and my 90% interval. And here I can see that yes, it is statistically significant. Now, to come back to what I said before about this being redundant, it's exactly the same test. If I expand this, and if I expand this, you'll see that those p-values are absolutely identical. In fact, they're identical to absolutely every decimal place. And again, this is something that we would have talked about in class, so I'm not going to get into it, but here's evidence to, to show that mm, it's true. The f-test and the t-test on a simple linear regression are identical. That is why this is redundant. Okay, so let's get this back down. So the next step, we've got our estimated equation. Now we might want to see um, if our assumptions are being met here. So that's what this output is here. This is a residual output. So what we do in class is we do just simply a graphical interpretation of the residuals. We don't get into any hardcore testing. We just look at a scatter plot of the residuals and based on our observations about whether or not we see any particular patterns in those scatter plots, that allows us to determine whether or not any of those required assumptions are being met or violated. So for that scatter plot, I want my predicted values to be on my x-axis, and I want my standardized residuals to be on my y-axis. Now, as we talked about before, when we looked at this scatter plot, when Excel looks at those two columns of, of data, it's going to take the one on the right and put that on the y-axis. It'll take the one on the left and put that on the x-axis. So when I come down here, I can see that it's already laid out just right for me. My predicted sales, that's what I want on my x-axis, my predicted values. And standardized residuals, that is what I want on my y-axis. It's already on the right-hand side. So if I just go ahead and select my predicted values, hold down the command key, or on a Windows, you'd hold down the control key to select both columns here. There's my standard residuals. Insert that scatter plot. And there we have it. You can copy and paste that into your Word document. You can fix up some of the formatting, make it look prettier, whatever it is you think. But that is all I would want for my students for that uh, residual analysis. Below this, of course, you would have to write a little bit about what do you see or do you not see and whether or not you believe the assumptions are being met or whether or not you have reason to believe that they uh, fail. You can also identify potential outliers. This one here looks like it's a bit of an outlier. This one here, but ever just, just barely. Maybe by definition it's an outlier, but whether or not it matters is a question for debate. But that's it. Okay, so that should give us about everything. Oh, one more little detail. I always talk to my students about two main reasons for doing regression analysis. One is understanding the nature of the relationship between our two variables. Well, by that we're looking at, you know, that coefficient, that marginal effect. Is it significant or not? We've got an interval estimate of that marginal effect. That is all describing the relationship between those two variables. The second important use of regression analysis is to use that estimated regression equation to then obtain a predicted value. So to use it for prediction. So you can do that by hand, you can do that with a calculator, whatever the case might be. You might want to set it up in Excel so that you can do repeated predictions. And so what I would do is, you know, something, put in a, a predicted value here, and this is different from what we have down here. These are predicted sales using all of these values. Okay, it's a little bit different. I'm not going to talk about it here outside of the scope of Excel. 
But if I want to use my estimated equation for prediction, well, I need to have some value of interest for my dependent variable. And then I want to obtain the predicted value that corresponds to that. So what I would do is just input my estimated regression equation, which is that intercept plus that coefficient multiplied by some value of interest of the dependent variable. And so I'm using this as a cell reference. So right now, the value of the dependent variable is zero. It's just going to spit up the intercept. But now I want to predict, okay, what's the, what's the average sales of somebody who has um, 10 years of experience? So I'm putting in 120 because experience is measured in months. So I have to be consistent with those units of measurement. So somebody with 120 months or 10 years of experience, there it is. Predicted value is $181.9,000. What if they have five years of experience? So 60 months, 118. What if they have 72 months? So now I can just easily enter in any value of interest of the dependent variable, and I can obtain the corresponding predicted value. So two reasons for regression analysis, understand the nature of the relationship. That's all of this. And use it to predict values. So that's what I've got up here. Okay. That's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope that this was helpful. We'll do uh, another video, maybe two videos. We'll see how it goes for multiple linear regression. Um, and that should about wrap up this series. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.